I stopped in the shop, they all seemed to be looking at me. And then I realized they weren't looking at me at all. They were waiting for the bomb that was in the shop to go off. And so I turned to my flight sergeant who was just coming in through the back door and I was going to say to him, get out. But before I could speak, an estimated 15 pounds of high explosive went off one meter behind me. What it did was it blew a large hole in the floor. It, it, it stripped the linings off the wall. It's brought down the roof. It picked me up and actually blasted me out the front of the shop with all the debris. But fortunately, I have been wearing one of those flak jackets that I pointed out on the screen. But the metal went into the back of my legs, into my arms, into the back of my head. And when they got me in hospital, they took out all the large pieces. But of course, there were hundreds and hundreds of tiny pinhead pieces from the bomb. And uh, they said they couldn't do anything about that. There were too many of them. And, uh, and so um, I walked with the pain that that metal produced in my legs every time my muscles moved, every time my joints functioned. It was in the ankle joints, the knee joints, in all the, every part of my legs. I was invalided out of the RAF. Um, they did various audio tests on me. They said, um, and, and they said, you have got to get used to being profoundly deaf because this is how you're going to lead your life. There is, and I said, well, can't you give me hearing aids? And they said, sorry, fellow, you actually don't have enough hearing to amplify. I came to New Zealand. And some three years later, I was in Darfield. Anybody know Darfield? Ah, good little place, isn't it? I was in Darfield, because I live quite close to there, and I met a group of Christians. And when they discovered that I was deaf, they said, could they pray for me? I thought, well, I've got absolutely nothing to lose. I can't hear anything now, so might as well let them. So they took me to a house, and they sat me in a chair, and they put their hands upon me, and they asked God to heal my, my, my ears. And absolutely nothing happened. I went to bed that night just as deaf as ever I'd been. But in the morning, I was awakened by a clock very similar to this one that was sitting about a foot from my ear. And the ticking woke me up. Amen. Amen. That, yeah, bless you, Lord. That transformed my life. I had been unemployable, I couldn't hear speech, all the, uh, the eardrums had actually been stripped out of the inner ear, all the ner little hairs that give you hearing, you know, give you the frequencies, they're gone. And so there was no way that I was going to hear again. But God had other ideas. Well, it was about a week later when I was again doing some shopping in Darfield, and I met, <laughs> I met this group of Christians again. And I grabbed them and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I can hear. And they jumped around the street shouting hallelujah and praise the Lord and all that kind of thing. And I thought, what strange people. Um, <laughs> but I didn't care. I could hear. And that's what mattered to me. And they were just going to go. We were just going to part. When I suddenly had an idea, I said, hey, look, you prayed for my hearing and it got restored. How about you pray for my legs? And they said, come with us. And they... They took me to that same room, sat me in that same chair. They put their hands upon their legs and they prayed. And as they prayed, the pain drained out of my legs. And I have never had any pain in my legs since. Amen. Bless you, Lord. I was so empowered last night um, by the movement of the Holy Spirit that I thought, man, I am glad that I stopped procrastinating and got off my chuff and done something about it and got some guys together um, because they were all sitting there enjoying it and the discussions that we had afterwards, uh, like out of this world, is really absolutely awesome. And the biggest thing that empowers me to keep going and, and to stop procrastinating and put it, uh, some form of game plan into action is the fact that I, I do it for God and I do it for the guys that I can personally be involved with bringing along here. And the last three or four years, I've been personally involved with two or three guys that I've asked to come along. And uh, most of them have been non-Christians. Most of them have given their lives to Christ on the Friday night of PK. And um, this year, we've got uh, a, a bunch of guys that I've been involved with again, um, which is totally it just it really 
blows yeah. me away. And and I think that's what gets me up and going because I'm the world's greatest procrastinator. I just keep putting it off and off and off. But uh, I like what Nike says: just do it. And um, God, for some reason, He always prompts me. Always, every time, He prompts me and says, "You need to go and do it." Awesome. And just and and yeah. Awesome. And, and it's great to see all you guys here. It's mm. awesome. Thank mm-hmm. you.